And let's see if we can get the, uh, the camera to recognize me. How about this hand? No? There we go. You gonna follow me now? Yep. Okay. So this is Edward Kranz, How You Badge Binder of Book Forge. And this is going to be the first full live session in the new space. Um, got a lot of work to do before it's what I envision. Um, I'm not even sure if the audio works. That's why I went live early. And I'm going to... Make sure, right. where are my glasses? All right, that might be the next thing I need to use for where my glasses are. That's why I started early. Oh, hey, I'm over here. Right there. Okay, so I don't need to sync my headphones because I can hear the, uh, the audio full from here. And my dog is very concerned because when he hears reality, he hears a speaker at the same time. If it bugs him, I, I don't know why. Uh, you ought to hear him when he hears himself uh, barking or making noise. Okay, so now that I know that our audio is working um, with the Ada Mini Pro software, uh, I did some adjustments because the webcam microphones uh, typically haven't been great. And I do not have my condenser microphones set up yet, and I'm not even sure how or where I'm going to set it up. So I went in and I adjusted the EQ settings, um, and I also hit the expander and the limiter and uh, did some tweaks in the master. So hopefully this audio is, is good. Um, I also know that some of the other, um, yeah, some of the other live sessions, um, I don't come onto the stage or the audio doesn't come on for 20 or 30 seconds. And people have uh, commented that, hey, there's no audio and they stopped watching it. So I'm gonna go back uh, and adjust the historical live sessions and edit out that first 20 or 30 seconds. So when it does come on, you have audio, you know what's going on. And uh, yeah, I think that'd probably be a good idea. So, <sighs> all right, new space. Um, it, it's been a challenge the last week. I have started working. I've done a couple projects in here. And um, being neurodivergent, having my stuff moved and not where I'm used to it is, is difficult to adjust to for me. Um, so learning the new layout, I'm not even sure it's going to stay this way, uh, has been fun. Uh, trying to figure out where the cameras are going to go. Like right now, you've got my wide angle uh, view. And uh, but the problem I have right now is because the computer is actually in the other room, um, I can't see what's going on. So if the camera stopped working or the audio stopped working uh, or I wasn't in the frame, uh, I, I don't see it. So at some point, I need to move a monitor this way uh, so I have an idea of, of what's actually going on. Um, I do have a camera set up here, and unfortunately for me to switch to this camera, I have to go to the other room, switch it, and come back. Uh, not ideal, but it's the setup that I currently have. Uh, at some point, I'd like to get an inexpensive laptop to actually uh, use as a monitor and run the show. Um, my video editing bay is great for just that. I take 4K video, I can edit the heck out of it, and uh, that's awesome, but it's not necessarily a requirement for streaming. Uh, 
Okay, so I'm going to show a few things uh, and then get them off the table. Uh, earlier today, I finished sewing uh, the second volume of the medical journal. Uh, this is the first volume. Now, mind you, this was all one big book. It was six inches thick, and I've turned it into two three-inch books. And this one here has... Uh, the spine lining and the end bands and everything on it and it is ready to go and so later on today or tomorrow uh, I'll be putting this in the job backer we'll put the round in it we'll uh, line it and get it ready and then we'll case these in uh, I'm thinking maybe uh, I will hang on to these and we'll case them in next week live uh, I think that would be fun so Let's, uh, let's look for that in the near future. Uh, in the meantime, I'm going to take these and set them aside. With this nice little radiator ledge behind me. Uh, okay. Because I went early, I didn't get a chance to eat. So I apologize. So I did a little fun experiment. I did do a post on it with static images. Um, so this was my first attempt at what is known as a dragon scale binding, and it looks a lot like a scroll. Um, I believe it's Chinese in origin. And um, the cool thing about this, won't be very as evident uh, in my unveiling of this. Now, I use relatively inexpensive material. It's stiff, so it's definitely gonna roll up. But the, uh, the design of these, as you can see, there's an overlap. I'll step back, maybe I need that. Um, there's an overlap, and along these overlapped edges, they put a section of the image, so the image actually flows through the whole thing, and then when you open it up, you can read the text on the pages. Uh, if you want to see more about this, uh, take a look at the post I did, um, I'm going to say about a week ago. Uh, I am going to be making another blank dummy uh, just to kind of, this one here, uh, I, I looked at someone's work and I put this information in the actual post for the when I made this. Uh, so forgive me for not remembering their names right off the top of my head. And after I, I looked at the post and I made this, it used a separate piece of material uh, as the hinge and it attached each sheet to that, uh, that material and that material was attached to the outer protective roll. Looking at, uh, and again, forgive me for not remembering his name. Um, it's in the other post, look back a week. Um, he's a master artist, bookbinder. Uh, he basically has almost single-handedly revived this particular style uh, in China and uh, absolutely brilliant work. Um, just Google dragon scale binding and it, it'll come up. There's two or three videos on this particular gentleman. Um, I think in my post, I actually linked to his YouTube videos on his process and his art, more of his art than his process. But in watching his video, I don't believe that they used a separate piece of material. I think, um, they were very meticulous in, 
printing, laying out and printing the pages. And I think the pages had a fold and were attached directly to the support. So that is my goal with the next one. And that is, uh, I'm gonna use, okay, so yeah. This is a, uh, they're calling it Oriental Rice Paper. Uh, L. Jackson and, and company. Um, I'm using this because it was relatively inexpensive and when I'm making mock-ups and that, I don't want to waste expensive, uh, expensive paper. Uh, in the future, when I, when I do make a proper book uh, out of this and I do print images and text on these books to, to make it a readable document. Um, I'll of course use more traditional uh, Chinese paper uh, and a lot more thought. And now this one here, I'm gonna use this rice paper. I'm gonna use uh, some, printed, um, some printed decorative paper as the outer protective roll. And uh, so it'll at least be aesthetically pretty and I'll probably put a label on it of some sort. Uh, well, that initial dummy, I did not. But this should simulate uh, the, the really nice, soft, flowing effect uh, and the way it um, drapes for the, the gentleman who revived this particular art form. So, something to look forward to, uh, to in the future. Uh, I hope um, you like these. Once I get uh, a really solid idea of how and what I'm doing and I understand the process and and that I will be making a detailed tutorial uh, on both with a extra material type of hinge and one uh, with just putting the material directly on the uh, the scroll the support which brings me to another fun announcement um, I have been working on revising how I've been doing my posts. And I, uh, I think a couple weeks ago, I posted some stuff on an X-Book structure and uh, essentially taking, taking us way back to really simple, easy designs, um, book structures. And I'm going to start building off of that. And this first tutorial is going to be the X-Book structure. The structure itself isn't groundbreaking or earth shattering, but uh, this has been an exercise in, okay, how do I teach to an audience um, that has many different learning styles? So the new tutorial, I'm gonna have a video. And in the video, we are going to go step by step. I will comment, commentate on it, uh, narrate it, and we'll take and make a blank one and then we will make one with uh, probably out of paste paper with some sort of design on it. So it's got a little bit more style and pizzazz. Uh, I also laid out um, a real quick X book uh, based off of, um, I've been writing these um, first world Viking beard problems. And they're just kind of humorous, funny jokes about having a beard and some of the downfalls that come with it. Uh, so I'll probably in the video use a printed copy of that so you can actually see how it's laid out, how I did the mock-up, and uh, because it doesn't necessarily go in the order you would think. So there'll be a video with all this information in it from the planning stage to the execution stage of making this particular book. I want all of my future tutorial style videos to kind of follow that format. Um, then in the text, in the body of the post, there is going to be uh, some, a little bit of history, any interesting facts that I can put about whatever book structure, in this case, the X book structure. Uh, I'll put that information in the body of the text and then there's gonna be a detailed step-by-step uh, -step tutorial in words and pictures so that way, if maybe, you know, you're not really into watching the videos, that's fine. If you want to read, follow the steps that way, that'll be great. Now, attached to the post, I will also have a PDF version of the written tutorial. 
That way you can just download it and you don't have to come back to the Patreon page every time you want to remember how it's done. Um, there will also be a printable PDF of the First World Viking Beer Problem layout. So you can print it out, fold it up, uh, cut it, and make this X-Book structure and see how my book falls into place. Uh, so I figure with all of these different types of learning into one post, I think they'll be beneficial. And I, I picked the X-Book structure to start with because it was very simple and it wouldn't take me a huge amount of time to do. Now, if I sat down and I decided that, oh, I'm going to make one of these on medieval girdle book bindings, that's going to take me months to do. So, well, that's probably coming sometime in the future. That's not wood. There we go. Um, I figured I'd start off with something simple, easy, let you guys see it, digest it, give me some feedback, uh, Help me out with the visuals. Help me out with the wording. Uh, does it make sense? Were you able to do it? Um, I know at one point I watched a video on the X-Book and I followed it. And it didn't make sense. Actually, no, it was the book. I have a book that had it in it. And there was one step that just didn't make sense to me, uh, the way she had written it. And it didn't follow the pictures. And when I watched a video, it made a lot more sense. Um, Okay, so stuff we have coming down the pipe. Some different tutorials. I'll do a tutorial on the dragon scale. Maybe we'll make that one. No. So there's going to be the X-Book. And then the one after that is going to be the X-Book with pockets. And then maybe I'll do the dragon scale. And I, I want to have all those out to you by the end of the year. So the, uh, the tutorial for the X-Book, uh, the tutorial is written. Um, all I have to do is sit down... Uh, make a couple X books, shoot the video, take the pictures, plug them into their spaces, and then I can release it. So I'm thinking maybe a week or two. All right, so other Patreon releases that I need to get out to you guys. The uh, part six of the 10 part 1850 family heirloom Bible is mostly done editing. Uh, right now um, I, have, I have it edited down. Um, what I'm doing right now is, because uh, usually I've got the two uh, windows for the, the, the other cameras, but I got the main above the desk camera, and I'm making sure that whatever I'm doing isn't out of shot or covered up by one of those other two windows. So I'm in the process of editing that. Once I have that done, there's some speed ramping I'll do shorten the video, and then I'll do the voice, voiceover. I'm sorry this is taking so long, but trying to get the bindery set up, trying to get a couple projects done so I can get some income coming back in because I, I had a month disruption there. And uh, so bear with me. Stuff is coming. Uh, I've been working on it, and it'll come more in a flood than anything. You've had this drought. And also there'll be a bunch of content for you guys to digest. All right. Uh, so enough of upcoming posts. Um, today, I've got a couple different things that I'm going to do. I put uh, a new, I rebacked this uh, children's book. It was completely coming apart. Uh, it needs some touch up. I got some glue sticking out and a little bit of string there. But uh, So yeah, I put a new cloth spine on and we did some work on the inner hinges. And, but yeah, so it's a really nice, solid book now. It's uh, probably 60, 70 years old, and the lady wanted to give it to her new granddaughter. Uh, so today, uh, once I stop talking at you, I am going to use some methyl cellulose and shore up uh, the corners. And then later on today, I'll call her and tell her she can come get it anytime tomorrow on. Uh, so I need to finish this project up. I have another children's book, which I'm going to be working on. Um, the book itself is a part. Uh, it has no backboard. Um, so I'll be using some yellow cloth and uh, I'll be uh, rebinding that one. Uh, I have some really fun stuff. This is a, an accordion book, uh, kind of accordion postcards of uh, 
the World's Columbian Fair, Chicago, 1893. Um, I think this falls under the category of ephemera, uh, but it has some hinging issues. And the back image, yeah, see that, that's coming apart, which it shouldn't be doing. Um, so this will be my main focus today, I think. Uh, and then the spine needs some tissue repair. Uh, in addition to doing that, um, we have this uh, Song Hits magazine from 56. And uh, it's of course got Elvis Presley on it. So we're gonna be doing some dry cleaning on this. Uh, get that ready. And, uh, but yeah, so this will be my main focus today and then shoring up the corners on that particular book. But to do that, I need to find my dry cleaning material. Hi, Katie. So I'm still unpacking boxes. I'm not going to fully unpack this box. I'm just going to look around and see if I can find what I'm looking for. This has a lot of uh, wheat paste and odd stuff. All right. Not in this box. my cabinet supplies. Uh, powders for wheat paste, um, things to use to deodorize. Some glues, Kusa G, and absorbing a uh, uh, Absorine. Okay, so we're gonna use that to do some light dry cleaning. Now, I'll tell you a really fun story about that particular product. So the cabinet supplies don't have a home yet. Um, they may go in a case in the other room. Uh, Absorine. So back in the day, uh, when before electricity, excuse me, uh, your house was lit by candles and uh, you had your fireplace, and this created a lot of soot. And so above your sconces, you'd have sooty buildup all around this area. And I don't know why the camera didn't follow me, but. Uh, and it would get on your, your wallpaper. Uh, and it was kind of a pain in the butt to clean. You really didn't want to wet it. Uh, so they came out with this product and it's, it's kind of like a putty. You know, it's, uh, this has kind of been used a little bit. It's kind of like a putty. And uh, it smells very familiar and if you, ever been to Bible school, you'll know this smell and you'll understand why in a minute. Uh, so it's just, uh, yeah, it's, it's putty. So and you would use this and you would rub it on your walls to clean Oh, <laughs> your wallpaper, <laughs> there's the word. Now it doesn't take a lot of it, but what this does, it 
is it takes any of the soot in the dirt and kind of pulls it into this putty, which is great for cleaning. Uh, like if you've ever had stuff in a, in a house fire, like you have records and books, um, you get a, a bunch of this material and you go over it and you just gently roll it around. Uh, you can break it up. Uh, there's other products that are more like uh, erasers and it, it's literally what they are. They're just super fine shredded erasers and you take that material and you do what I'm doing here where you just kind of roll it around the book now you never want to go in because that'll catch the edge of your paper now what you don't see or you can't feel in a video is this had a little bit of texture to it. There was some dirt and soot and uh, just years of, of buildup on it. And now I'm going to brush this off. I suppose it feels a lot different. Uh, let's gather some of this up. All right, so where was I going with this story? So back in the day, you would use this stuff to clean your wallpaper. Well, progress came along. We've got lights, electricity. Uh, people didn't use candles as much. Uh, you ended up with electric sconces and electric lights. And Well, this product was no longer in use. Uh, it was a sad time for this company. But someone decided that if they take this product and they put coloring in it, different coloring, and they market it to children, they could call it Play-Doh. Now you understand, if you went to Bible school, you'd, uh, you'd recognize this smell. Play-Doh has a very distinct scent to it. And they just kept making the product and they just rebranded it Play-Doh. And that's where Play-Doh came from. It was originally a utilitarian household cleaning agent taking the soot off your walls. You can use it over and over until it's dried up or used up or it's absorbed too much stuff. I'm just going to brush this away. But honestly, I should have a, a dry brush that I use. I have a conservation style brush. I don't know if I've got a clean one right now. Really wide enough to do what I want to do. There's that. So I was going to check real quick and see if there's any comments. Hey, I really like So, I don't need to see my headphones. 
And here comes the dog. Yeah, yeah. Okay. So. Stop. Okay. So I'm not going to do this with the dog in the room, obviously. Um, what I'd really like for you to do is leave questions. Stop. That's enough. Hi. Okay, got a knot. This is Loki Dog. Yes. Yes, I love you too. Okay, go. 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 Okay. Yeah, help Loki out of the room. Go. Go. Alright, so Loki is... Why is this not tracking? Huh. That's interesting. Um, he's a good dog, but... Uh, it's a little neurotic at times. Oh, what I was trying to say is I really like feedback. I like uh, communication. I like audience participation. So if you have any questions, comments, criticisms, uh, whatever, you just want to say hi, go down in the comments. Start a conversation, start a dialogue. Uh, while I'm live, I really can't uh, respond to those. But when I'm done with the live session, I promise you, I go to the computer, I check and see if there's any comments, feedbacks, questions, criticisms, and I will answer them immediately. And um, if you want to have a conversation about it, I will do that. Um, one of the reasons I do the live sessions is because I want you to, to be able to see and, and, and realize what goes on in the bindery. And uh, I, I need to know if you like what you're seeing. Um, some of the content that I post, is it doing it for you? Are you getting your money's worth? Um, you know, for those who are just tuning in for the free stuff, I'm, not, I'm worried about you, but not as worried about you. For those who subscribe to a tier, I want to make sure you're getting your money's worth. Um, I always try to provide the best content I can. I'm always striving to improve it. And um, yes. All right. So I'm going to get a paper towel or two. I thought I had a roll in here, but I'm not seeing it. And I'm going to shore up the corners on this book. We're also going to trim some of this other material off. And look, you need to go. Go. So I'm not sure why the camera stopped following. Um, it's supposed to be an AI base. Camera and... All right, so paper towel, one more second. And now I lost my mouth oh, right there. So, okay, now it's locked on. Okay. So the camera works off of hand gestures. Um, I'm going to switch over to this camera, and that way you can see what's going on on the bench. So give me one more second. Like I said, having the computer and everything in the other room is kind of a pain in the butt.
Okay, you got me again? Yeah, all right. All right, so what I'm going to be using, uh, I have a couple different micro spatulas. Uh, this one is a favorite, but this one's a little bit thinner. So I'm thinking I'm going to be putting some methyl cellulose between these layers and I'm going to squeeze them together. Now, you can do this with um, paste. Now, I don't have to get it through every single layer. Um, this methyl cellulose is fairly loose. And my goal is to get it through enough that it penetrates. And I use the methyl cellulose to kind of blend in any of the covering material that might be loose. Now, this is just really quick and dirty. Um, if this were a full restoration, um, I would have used a wheat starch, put that in there. Um, and then I would have used sheets of Hanji to go underneath the board here and around here to kind of further protect these. Uh, but this is not, I'm just kind of shoring up the edges and making sure that any loose flaps are kind of put down along the edge here. You can see these little pieces that are just flaking up. And it doesn't take a lot. The methyl cellulose is a highly fibrous adhesive used in conservation work. And it has a lower hold strength than, let's say, uh, paste starch or uh, PVA. Uh, but the nice thing about it is it dries perfectly clear and it's highly fibrous. So in saying that, um, even just putting it on some of this slightly raggedy edge, um, I'm putting fibers into it that will help Hold it together. All right, so what I'm going to do, my bowl holder in there for a second. If my hand gets in the way, I apologize. I'm going to make sure that it gets in there pretty good. I also want to make sure that I don't get it on any other parts of the book.
When your methocellulose can be mixed in varying degrees of, of thicknesses from uh, <coughs> excuse me, <coughs> really thick jelly uh, to this loose uh, consistency that I have it. Depending on what you're gluing up and uh, the material You don't have to get it into every single layer, but as many as possible if you want a really good tight cornerback. Notice I wipe my fingers on my clothes quite a bit. I do have aprons, I always forget to put them on.
there's that. That's just a little bit of glue left over from the binding process. Double check my corners here. I probably ruffled them. these dry and in a little bit we will call the client up and let her know that her book is ready. Methyl cellulose comes in a powder. You can get it at book, most book binding supply shops. And uh, yeah, it's a great uh, low adhesive, uh, adhe well, a low, what's the word I'm looking for? Low tack adhesive. Uh, all right, so this poor bad boy. try and do is separate this front page so I can work the case and it seems to me I'll do more damage than good. Never mind. We're not going to do that. But what we are going to do is we are going to reinforce these hinges, and it looks like someone's already done that with some tape here. See, this is coming apart already.
All right, let me get some Hanji paper. Do some prep work first. I'm going to set this aside. small glass of water. Actually, I have a small glass of water on my bench. I'm going to need a very small brush. All right. And I'm going to need a slightly larger brush. <sighs> because, and I'm going to need wax paper for this. All right. So first thing we're going to do is we are going to cut some strips. All right. I don't want my strips to be very wide. So I'm just taking a little bit of water and I'm going along the edge that I want to tear. And I prefer to tear my Hanji or Kozo uh, because it will give me an uneven fibrous edge that is so much easier to blend in to other materials. And I'm going to take this. nice strip to work with. So I'm going to do a few more of those. So bear with me. And I'm not worried about a particular measurement. Um, I want them about a half inch to five inches wide. I'm approximating that. Doesn't have to be exact in this particular case. Visit the tearing episode.
a little bit wider, but it's not going to hurt anything. Some of these may or may not require this, but at this point, since I have the book apart and we're going to be doing this anyway, might as well go ahead and reinforce them so they don't break at a later date and once I have the book put together I'm going to have to revisit it. So I'm going to shake this up a little bit. It looks like it might have settled. I'm going to have to make a new batch. sure that it's saturated. You'll notice I went out a bit to pull the fibers away. I'm also going to put just a really thin layer so it doesn't absorb all of it. Paying attention to how I picked it up. Let me show you the right side down. I'm going to work out any bubbles. Pull those fibers out and away from the center. I'm going to get all three of these on and then we'll do the next step. Probably some excess moisture on there, and I'm going to want to take the Ramy, touch it up real quick, pull that moisture off the top. Doing this uh, does a couple things. It one helps the fibers be pulled out, which makes a nice uneven edge. So it's not 
it's obvious that a repair was done. Pushes out any air bubbles, and it helps pull any moisture through the Hanji to help it adhere better. If at this point, when you lay it down, if you see any brighter coloration, that means you didn't get it to adhere and it's not as white, uh, and it's too white, uh, it won't, it'll look different, is what I'm trying to say. You can see this tissue is ultra thin. a piece of hanji, I'll be right back. You'll still be able to see me in that camera though. Supplies that I am in short supply of, and that's my hanji, or my Rimi paper, uh, Rimi cloth. Um, Rimi looks a lot like a dryer sheet, as you can see. Um, it's very fibrous, and it's a little absorbent, and we use it for a wide variety of things. What I do is I'll now go over the wet hanji. And this will pull out a lot of the moisture. It will also help flatten the Hanji paper. I use a lot of Hanji in paper repair, which is what we're doing now. And some of this is actual repair. Some of it is going to be preventative work. Um, all right, so uh, let that dry. Um, I really don't want to, to move this now because it really needs to dry. So I think what I'm gonna do is get a blotting paper and some more rime and we're going to put some weight on this. Ah, here we go. Also running very low in blotting paper. So I'll take my sheet of rime, I'll take a sheet of blotting paper, spans that beautifully, I'll put my board on it, and let's throw a couple weights.
Okay, so... Because of the, the much smaller nature of my bench, um, this needs to sit and dry for a bit, and then I'll pull out some more panels. Um, there's really not a whole lot more I can do uh, on this particular session on this bench. Uh, so I think we're going to cut this live session short, and maybe I'll do one later on in the week. Uh, one of the things that I'm thinking about doing is making the sessions later. Uh, maybe change Book Forge live till like 6 to 8 p.m. instead of 1 to 3. Uh, let me know in the comments if that is better for you. Um, I realize these stick around um, on YouTube. Um, I let them go to the public after a week or so. Uh, and then, of course, here on Patreon, you can access it anytime. Um, and the, the live sessions uh, have been free to the general public. Uh, I'm going to continue that through the end of the year. And then uh, the live sessions will be for uh, patrons only. Um, and then uh, maybe I'll let them go public after a week. So the, the patrons on Patreon will have them a week in advance than everybody else. And so, yeah, we'll do paid tiers, get them immediately. Uh, general public patrons get them after a week, and then they'll go live on YouTube at the same time a week later. That uh, that'll be the format for live. Um, and I want the live to be accessible. Uh, we're going to have enough content that is specifically for uh, all or one of the tiers. Um, we are going to start having uh, some additional content, which I'm excited about. Uh, I'm going to be going through my library and there's, I have some books in there I, I just haven't had time to read that I'd love to get to. Um, I've got some books that I want to share with you because I read them and I think they're valuable. And so what we're going to do is we're going to start um, maybe a general review of the book. And then over the next couple of weeks, um, we'll have select chapters, uh, key insights that I think um, are really valuable in the books. Uh, that way, if you if you don't have enough money to go buy, you know, a library, uh, bookbinding books, um, or if you were on the fence, ah, I don't know if I really want to buy that book or not, you know, maybe this will help you out. Um, this will also reinforce my knowledge, which is awesome. So we're going to have that, where each week we're going to have a segment on, you know, it might take us a couple months to get through some of these books. They're pretty thick. Um and then um, we're going to have a bookbinding unboxing book of the week. So I have an entire book collection that has been in storage for longer than I can remember. And I would really love uh, my shelves. I just set my shelves up in the other room. Most of them are barren. Um, I want to get my personal collection back out. Um, there's books that I just love. And there's books that I, I bought and I haven't had a chance to read yet. And they've been in storage forever. Um, over five years now. And uh, then I've got books that uh, I originally planned on opening a bookstore. And I, I was going to try it again down here on State Street. And the building that I was renting from, uh, it just didn't all, none of it worked out. So I don't know that I'm going to be able to start a physical bookstore. And I have no desire to run an online bookstore. Uh, Making money off of selling used books isn't my life goal. Um, I wanted a bookstore because I thought, you know, if I had the bookstore in the front, the bindery in the back, I would have the residual income from the bookstore, a little coffee shop in it. I have a lot of patrons. I could, you know, a lot of fun conversation. Um, and that was what it would be more about for me, helping people connect with you know the, the books and the literature that they're looking for. But 
yeah, it just hasn't come to fruition. And you know, I'm 55. I, I don't honestly see a viable option for me in downtown Erie. Uh, the whole PACA building episode, whether the board and Mark Tannenbaum uh, realize what they've done to people. Uh, they've destroyed a lot of people's businesses and dreams. I left because um, I just couldn't subscribe to their point of view, and it, it had cost me a lot of money. Uh, just over the, that one year I was there, um, I lost $24,000, and that doesn't even include the amount of money that I paid them in rent. Um, I wasn't able to do what I needed to do there. I, I lost clients. I lost um, my help. Uh, I don't have any more apprentices because they just couldn't access the building. Um, yeah, so we're going to start unboxing these books. And my personal books, we're going to put on the shelf. And then the other books are going to get divided into uh, these are valuable and sellable. And these books um, have zero value uh, and they either need donated or whatever. And these books have... Uh, what I refer to as pretty book value, and I will package them up in, you can buy a set of 5, 10, 15, 20, and use them for uh, real estate staging um, or for interior design or whatever. Uh, but yeah, I'm, we're just going to, each week, we're going to go through a box and see what's in it and go from there. So that'll be a lot of fun. We can talk about books. And that's for the folks that are uh, in the book lovers tier um, that they're, you know, they have a, a mild interest in book binding. They don't plan on being book binders. They're really interested in books. Uh, and so you'll see a lot of different books come out of those boxes. I don't even remember what's in those boxes, but uh, I had enough to start a bookstore, so it'll be a while. So we're going to have that coming up. Uh, we already talked about the new tutorial format, which hopefully will be coming fine. I have parts 6, 7, 8, 9, and 10 coming of the... 1850 Family Heirloom Bible, I promise you it'll get there. And Dave, I really wanted to have the cloth video shot, but it will get shot. I will get it done before this year is out. So help me. All right. Um, while this is drying, uh, my bench is all cleared up or uh, clogged up. Um, I really don't have anything set up on another bench to, to show you. Um, so I'm just going to go let you guys go back to whatever you're doing and uh, maybe Friday uh, we'll, we'll have another session to kind of make up the time and then of course uh, Bookforge Live will be resuming weekly um, we'll be trying different camera angles different lighting uh, projects on the bench how to shoot this I would eventually like to get this camera above the bench somehow but you know I, I don't I'm not sure how any of this is going to be set up so that's things I need to get done and, and work out so hey so we're Kranz, the Honey Badger Binder of Bookforge. I appreciate you tuning in. Uh, if you are not a subscriber to one of my tiers, please, please help me afford a rig to, to put the camera above the bench, uh, different equipment, uh, book buying tools, materials to get better content out to you guys. Um, if you are uh, a paying patron here on Patreon, you have subscribed to one of my tiers, Thank you. A thousand thank yous. Um, you've been a lot of help. Um, we've already bought some equipment, um, like the video cameras that we are using. Um, they aren't what I wanted, but they're what we could afford, and they got us going. And the, the, the Ada Mini Pro and all the cables to run everything and the microphone, which isn't set up. Um, but yeah, we got a lot more work to do, and thank you.